Today, San Francisco is marking the anniversary of the greatest disaster in its history, the 1906 earthquake. The devastation and the recovery that followed still serving as a potent symbol of the city's resiliency even 118 years later. This morning, city leaders and first responders held a ceremony at Lotus Fountain on Martin Market Street. You, San Francisco, open your golden gate. You let no stranger wait outside your door. A wreath was laid at the spot dedicated to the memory of late Senator Dianne Feinstein and those who died in the quake. After there was a procession to the gold-painted fire hydrant on 20th and Church near Dolores Park, city leaders reflected on the disaster and the many challenges the city has overcome in the decades since. And all the bad things they say about the city goes right out the window when we San Franciscans decide to do whatever we do. Speakers, as they often do, also took the chance to remind people to make sure to be ready for future quakes. Another major quake along the San Andreas Fault is expected within the century. With all the fault lines running through the Bay Area, we'll never be fully out of quake danger. Brian Hackney talked to experts about what you should have ready when a big one happens. My close associate, family therapist, Dr. Tara Fields. Dr. Tara Fields is a licensed marriage and family therapist. Look at this still as a choice. Dr. Fields has spent a career asking tough questions. Are you in or are you out? I paid her a visit. Hi. To see if she could answer one. Where's your earthquake preparedness bag? Oh my God, you just put me down the shame spiral or you just saved my life and my dog's life. Well, come on in. Turns out Tara and her husband are kind of prepared. See the armoire where all my china is? We have the earthquake retrofitting kit with the straps, but it hasn't been installed. How long have you had the kit? A few years. I think I should get partial credit for being prepared. Dr. Fields does have the basics. Medication, I have cash. I have anything that I would need for 24 hours. You know where to turn your gas off if there's a gas leak? Yes, about a year ago, I had my husband go through, how do you turn off the gas? How do you, you know, all those major things. For a more complete list of what Tara should have on hand, seismologist yeah. Ross Stein. Cheers, it's been too long. A complete earthquake kit would look like this. It's got a lot of water. It's got a mask, a cold pack, heat packs, lithium batteries, flashlight here, a utility knife, you need to cut, be able to cut things. That looks appetizing. This, is, this brick is food. I'm not going to vouch for the quality, but it's got to be filling because it weighs a ton. And the most important thing is, look, it all fits in a backpack. You throw it in your trunk of your car, and it's there when you need it. This is all the practical stuff. Coffee. I got to have coffee. You think that you're ready. You think you have all these practical steps. Oh, my God, we're having a nurse fight. Wait a minute. But when you're running a lot of stress hormones, Can you feel that? There go the lights. Oh. it's very hard to think clearly. So you should be prepared mentally as well. And there's one big thing that can help. Just take a breath. It's wonderful for any kind of anxiety. You breathe in for four through the nose. You hold for four. And then you exhale for eight. Oh, and guess what we found? Wait a minute, Brian Hackney. You may have saved the day. I had no idea where it was. <laughs> Now's the time to get ready. So if you're motivated now to put an earthquake kit together, the San Francisco Department of Emergency Management has some tips on where you can start. You will want a three-day supply of some of these essential items. Water, non-perishable food, a first aid kit, flashlight with extra batteries, a fire extinguisher, and a manual can opener. Those are just the basics. They also have a list of other things like a cell phone charger, which you probably have with you most of the time.